For more insight, Professor Dagmar Fischer joins us from the University of Jena's Department of Pharmaceutical Technology, is that right? That's right. She's conducting a comprehensive study on the potential risks of nanoparticles. That report showed us one particular application for nanoparticles. What other applications could we see in the medicinal field in the near future? I think we have two main areas. The first area is as a drug delivery system for different drugs, especially for targeted drug delivery to special organs uh, in the body. And on the other hand, we have the application of diagnostics, or we can put this together as so-called theranostic. And I think these are the two major parts for the future. What do we actually know to date about nanoparticles and what they can do to the human body? Mm -hmm. Nano is not nano. We have nanoparticles of different sizes, of different shapes, of different surface charges. One of them are biodegradable, the other not. So let me give you an example. For example, cationic means positively charged particles can interact in the body with every part of your body, all your cells, your blood proteins, or for example, the red blood cells. Because uh, they, the cells are positive, negatively charged, mm -hmm. and therefore we have an electrostatic interaction. If you now use an anionic particle, means a negatively charged or neutral particle, you can inhibit this. So mm -hmm. nano is not nano, and for every particle system, we have different properties in the body. You mentioned positive and negative. So are there good and bad nanoparticles, so to speak? Mm -hmm. There are. Um, Based on the toxicology, uh, in this uh, special example, the negatively one and the neutral one were the good one. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, if you look at drug delivery, the cationic one are the better one because they can interact with the cells and can transport their cargo. Well, uh, on the subject of negative ones, are there health concerns? Not really because they have no interaction. They can be, in most cases, eliminated from the body. So at the moment, there is no risk what we can have from the literature. A few years ago, there was a scare about nanoparticles in sunscreens. Was that justified at all? Um, not for the healthy tissue. Um, about 40 studies were performed. We have also an EU project called Nano Nanoderm, and they mentioned that these particles are only fixed in, in the upper part of the skin. So in healthy skin, there is no risk. It's different if you use very, very high concentrations. And if you look at the literature, in most cases, they use concentrations you never reach with a sunscreen. How do you actually get nanoparticles into the body then? Mm -hmm. You can do it in different ways, uh, by inhalation through the lung, over the skin. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do it by injection directly into the body. And all of these applications uh, need different types of particles to be successful, for example, as diagnostic or therapeutic. And just very briefly, is there a problem with these particles accumulating in the body? Maybe it depends. If you have a particle which is not degradable, then there could be the risk and they accumulate in the body. But this is the case. What we do, we try to fix a catalog with parameters that we can say this particle is really safe and can be eliminated from the body. Okay, good luck with your work. Professor Dagmar Fischer, pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you.